It's time. People have been wanting my keybinds and Fortnite settings for Chapter 2 2020. Well, actually, for a couple months now, but I've just been not doing it, so uh, here it is. <laughs> not sure why so many people want my settings, but I mean, I guess it's because, you know, I'm kind of a living legend. It's not a big deal. I'll give you them. Uh oh, and then right after, I'm going to play a game, and we're going to see if we can get a victory out with these epic settings. All right, pretty simply, I'm kind of just going to go through them. Scroll through them, literally. Like, I don't know. Pause it. You want to copy them these are what my settings are currently i do change my shadows to on sometimes but that's just because i kind of like shadows <laughs> and um the only reason i have dx11 on and not 12 is because i don't know if 12 works right now i, I don't I haven't caught an update on that multi-threaded rendering uh, i have an i7 8700k processor so i can utilize the multiple cores i'm pretending i know like what any of this means so yeah uh here are my game settings I don't know if anything in here is too special or whatever, but, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I don't know. Christmas sensitivity, 16.0%. I think I have to do some, uh, you know, tinkering around with that, and if I ever change my sensitivity, which I probably will soon, maybe, we'll see what happens. I'll make another video on it. My DPI is 1600. This is just what I use. This is what I'm used to. Uh, and here are the other sound settings if that's important. Heads up, it takes a lot of gaming prowess to use these keybinds. You gotta be like a master. Actually, I think they're pretty easy keybinds. I just, um, I don't know if, you know, they're not gonna work for everyone, but in my opinion, these are pretty much the best, the easiest ones to use. But I guess everyone would have that opinion on their own keybinds, right? I don't know. Let me know what you think about them. It's, uh, obviously a long list because the game's had like a thousand vehicles. So, you know, go through them. Are. Pause wherever you want, and uh, you know that'll be that. Simple as it. Simple as it is. People also have been wanting my PC specs, but I think I'm gonna save that for like my Instagram or something like that. I've been using that again, so if you want my specs, I'll be posting that there eventually. And as for my setup, if you want to see what it actually looks like. Go to my Twitter, at that jugger for both social medias. Anyways, time to hop in the game and see if we can get a win. Jugger. Okay. So, yeah, of course, I don't know where I'm going. I'm just dropping it, huh? I assume I'm going to get legendaried in a second. Oh, he's the best player already. Best player NA, yeah? Is that you? Is that you, Tifu? Is that you? Oh, it's not you. I guess I had the wrong person. Sorry. <laughs> what? This person was like hacking. I don't even understand. What was I looking at? What was that? Best player in A. Okay, so where's all the fighting going on that I should know about? I probably... It's probably not to my concern. Hey, take a look at this. Take a look at this. Ah. Okay, I did a lot of damage to him, which means I'm winning this battle. Let me guess. No? Alright, it's not a big deal. I can do this. I can do this. I've trained for this day. I've trained for this. I really have. Oh, I'm out of... Okay. I've trained for this day. I guess I actually have, to be honest with you. Wow, this is fun. This is actually going not too bad so far, but... Just wait, I'm gonna get like a legend, and it's not gonna end well. These lag spikes are ever gonna stop. Literally sounded like a space shuttle just took off. Whoa! What? What are these crazy loud noises? Oh, somebody's somebody's driving a boat on land and they're tearing everything apart. What are the odds? Should I just Oh! What his boat just has a mind of his own? Okay, step aside. This guy just turns into booger real quick. Yeah. Man. Okay. That guy just got owned. Huh? Is this a guy? Bots exist still? I don't get it. I don't know what that guy was doing. It was pretty weird. I, I don't 
Um, alright, yeah. No, yeah, that's what we get. Oh, I hear heavy snipers, and it's just anxiety. Here it is. My first and last heavy sniper kill of the season. Ooh, come on, come on. Stand still. There we are. Oh, and it vanished. It went right through him. Alright, good. Nice. Everyone just has a heavy sniper. Everyone. The entire game gets it. When, when a weapon's unvaulted, it just gives it to the entire game, like, automatically. Forgot about that new feature. Dang it. He's behind that tree right there in front of me. I know it. I guarantee it. There's a guy behind him. Watch. Told you. No. It's only me. It's only me. I'm the only player that you're allowed to shoot at in this game. It's a new rule where you can only shoot at me. Why does he have unlimited ammo? He, ha he just keeps doing it. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. No, not why. How? It's impossible at this point. It's over. I'm doing it to you. It's your own medicine. How do you like it? Yeah, you don't. Take that. And that. Or not. My first win, NA. Hello, there's a guy right behind you? Yeah. I was afraid you guys were camping on me. Well, first one of the season, basically. Um, <laughs> well, thought I'd just end it on a good note. So, as you can see, clearly the best settings, clearly the best keybinds. I mean, I dominated that game. It was basically a 20 game. My friends, let's do the question of the day. Today's question of the day is, let me get a drum roll. What keyboards and settings do you currently use? We're really curious to see what you guys use, so be sure to let us know in the comments. Let me ask you this question real quick. Who are you hanging around? Who's in your inner circle? Who are your friends? Because who you hang around is usually what you're gonna become like. So if you hang around people that are up to no good, guess what? You're gonna be up to no good. If you hang around people who are successful, then what's gonna happen is, is that ultimately you're gonna find your success. So if you wanna be successful in this game and also in life, you have to really choose the right people to be around you. Just a food for thought. All right, guys, so it's time to start the video. Sit back, relax, and let's get my favorite candy. You already know what that is. It's that bunch of crunch, and let's get this going. Your sensitivity basically means the ratio of mouse movement to the amount your cursor moves in-game. With the lower sensitivity, you get more precision in your mouse movements. With the cursor that moves slower, while on high sensitivity, your cursor will move further with less movement. You know, a few classic examples of high and low sensitivity are Benji Fishy, who plays on an extremely high sensitivity, and Mongrel, who plays on an extremely low sensitivity. Your sensitivity is a combination of your DPI, or dots per inch, which basically controls the speed of your mouse in general, and then your in-game sensitivity, which can fine-tune that other sensitivity to better fit your game. Your DPI can be found in any sort of software that you install for your mouse, and can be adjusted however you like. However, you know, we recommend sticking to 400 or 800. Both of these are combined to form your eDPI, which is your true sensitivity. Your eDPI is found by multiplying your DPI by your in-game sensitivity. For example, if you play on 400 DPI with a 14% in-game sensitivity, and 400 times 0.14 is 56. So, your eDPI would be 0.14. All right, so here's the deal. You're gonna know that you found a really good sensitivity when you can perform accurate flick shots, track moving opponents with decent consistency, and can also build and edit really well. One more thing to understand about sensitivity and most other settings is that it comes down to solely your preference. Trust me, <laughs> if I knew one sensitivity that was perfect for everyone, I would share that with you right now, but I don't, sorry. But it's the simple truth that everyone has different preferences, right? You may enjoy the extra precision of a low sensitivity and go for an eDPI of 50 or lower, or you might like high sensitivity and the ability to build super fast, which might bring you to 90 or higher. If you like a fair mix of both, you might pick something in between. You know, the only way to find your perfect sensitivity is to simply try a few out. However, you know, it is super important to understand that switching your sensitivity every single day is gonna do nothing but hurt you. When you find one you're comfortable with, stick with it, please. Then after a while, you know, if you think changing your sensitivity will make you better at the game in the long run, then give it a shot. We recommend starting off by using the sensitivities from a few pros and then from there, narrowing it down to the ones that you like and adjusting them until you feel 100% confident with the sensitivity. Here are a few examples of pros and their eDPI. This might give you guys a few ideas of some sensitivities to try out. Moncro's eDPI is 41. 
Benji Fishies is 108. Tfus is 40. Zex Roll plays at 48. Clicks plays at around 70. Mr. Savage plays at 117. And Nosh plays at 200. Yes, 200. I have no idea how he does it, but it clearly works because he's 10 times better than most of us. <laughs> As you can see, hardly any pros use the same sensitivity and it ultimately comes down to what you feel comfortable with, right? So try out a few sensitivities and see how you like them and you'll eventually find one you like. Along with sensitivity, another major setting comes into play, which is your keybinds. All right, so your keybinds are another huge setting which can heavily influence your gameplay. It's important to find the optimal keybinds so you can hit your buttons quickly and efficiently. There are three important aspects of your key binds that you have to think about when deciding on your binds, okay? Which include distance from WASD, finger spreading, and utilization of mouse buttons. The first aspect of your key binds, distance from WASD, determines like how far you actually have to reach to hit the buttons. A key bind like Y is not optimal, as you have to reach halfway across your keyboard to hit it. However, you know, a key like E or F is great as they are both right next to WASD and aren't difficult to reach at all. So prioritize your building, guys, editing and use keybinds, all right, by putting them as close to WASD as possible. A few examples of close binds that you should be using include Q, C, V, F, E, R, Tab, Left Shift, and your first four or five number keys. Second, we've got your key by spreading. Putting too many keybinds on one finger will put way too much stress on that one finger, thus reducing your speed. That's why, you know, it's just really important to spread out your keybinds, preferably, you know, only having one or two major binds on each finger. A huge mistake I see a lot of new players make is using a keybind setup with all index finger binds, something like E, F, R, T. All right, this might work for like some people, but it's much less optimal and we recommend spreading your binds out as much as you possibly can before resorting to something that isn't optimal. Finally, my friends, you know, we've got one of the most overlooked aspects of your key binds, your mouse button utilization. It's absolutely crucial that you use them for your building as they're easy to reach, you know, not tiring and really extremely fast to respond. You know, most people use them in one of two ways, either for their wall and ramp as those are your two most used build pieces or on ramp and cone, as your cone won't be used quite as often in conjunction with your other pieces. You know, I know a lot of people who prefer the ramp cone mouse button layout, but it's totally up to you which combination you like. But be creative, guys, all right? If you don't like either of these, experiment with them for a bit, you know, try it out. Just keep in mind that your mouse buttons are easily some of your best binds and you should utilize them as much as possible. You know, your keybind setup, similar to your sensitivity, is something that you're going to develop over time. It's not something that you're going to be able to find in a few minutes. It'll take a lot of adjusting to get them perfect, okay? There is a reason you see pros like Mongrel changing their keybinds up almost daily, man, because they're constantly looking for any little adjustments that can just make them get better. So just keep trying different combinations out, and you're going to find one you like, I promise. Okay, so now that we've gone over all of these crucial settings, there's one more in-game setting to go over, and that's your visual settings. All right, so as for your visual settings, you know, the setup is pretty simple. First, we recommend setting everything to low except for your view distance, okay, which should be either high or maximum, depending on the power of your PC. These settings are going to give you guys the best performance, but if you're the aesthetic type and you want the best looks, then you can tweak and adjust them however you like. Alongside this, if you feel like changing up the looks of your game a bit, you can try out some colorblind options to change the color scheme. You know, the two most popular options are Tritonote and Deuteranope. Okay, so try out a few colorblind settings and just see if you like their looks better. Finally, multi-threaded rendering should always be on if your system is good and runs well, and we recommend to keep motion blur and V-Sync off unless you're going solely for looks, as they can't hurt your gameplay. Alongside these, my friends, you can also adjust your HUD scale, which changes the size of your HUD in-game, also known as your heads-up display. Your HUD can be adjusted to be larger or smaller as you see fit, and we recommend testing out a few different HUD scales to see which ones you like. All right, so as for the best of the settings, like auto open doors, confirm edit on release, auto sort consumables, and like others, you know, we can't truly give a definitive like yes or no. 
These settings simply boil down to like whether or not you prefer them. We recommend giving every setting a fair shot and playing with it for a few games, you know, adjusting them, you know, to however you see fit. Try out each setting individually and just see if you like using it and just see if it helps. If you do, then keep it. Otherwise, turn it off. All right, so now that we've gone over everything you can do on your PC and in-game to improve your performance, let's go over your peripherals, which are basically your settings, but for your hardware. Your peripherals are extremely important to your gameplay as well, just as much as your keybinds or sensitivity. You know, if you have low quality peripherals or peripherals that don't match your performance, it can seriously hurt your in-game performance. You know, pros like Tifu and Mongrel have gone through so many peripherals. They're probably thousands of dollars down because of that. <laughs> Realistically, you know, most of us don't have the money to try out another peripheral every other day. So we're going to give you guys a few pointers so you can just find peripherals you like without much of a hassle. Our first peripheral is your headset, and your headset is one of the more lenient options. You know, audio quality in Fortnite is a bit harder to tell between headsets, and they don't have much impact. However, you know, if you're using a headset microphone and not an external one, then you're gonna wanna try and find a pretty good one. All right, so let's just go over a few of our favorites, okay? First, we've got the $50 HyperX Cloud Stinger. You can't go wrong with this headset. From my own experience, it has a decent quality microphone, solid audio quality, and it takes a long time to wear out if you handle it with care. You know, I know many people that have used them and they don't ever break. <laughs> the Cloud Stinger is a great budget option that still provides most of the benefits other headsets provide at a fraction of the price. Second, we've got the HyperX Cloud 2, clocking in at $100. All right, so this awesome piece of hardware offers a detachable microphone with noise canceling technology to filter out background noise, high frequency response, and it also works for console and PC. Finally, we've got the most expensive option, the $330 SteelSeries Arctix Pro Wireless. This is the headset I know a lot of people use as well. You know, first off, it's wireless with almost zero delay with Bluetooth support. This headset also picks up any sounds up to 40,000 hertz, includes two swappable batteries so you can just have no downtime while charging, and an amazing ClearCast microphone which has studio quality voice clarity. Okay, so now that we've been over three of the best headsets, let's go over mice. Your mice is a really big factor in your gameplay, guys. So it is so important to prioritize it, you know, just as a major component in your setup. Our first mouse, ladies and gentlemen, the cheapest option is the Logitech G203, clocking in at a very reasonable $40. That's like one week of doing chores for those of you that don't have jobs. Well, that was for me growing up. Now today, I mean, parents be spoiling their kids. This mouse has a great sensor, fast response time, you know, with a low weight of only 85 grams and comes at a very reasonable price. If you need a low price option that is still high quality, the G203 is definitely an option to consider. Our second mouse is the Glorious Model O, coming in at $50. This mouse has a solid sensor, good build quality, and weighs only 68 grams. There's no wrong with the Model O. And you can even get the smaller and lighter version, the Model O Minus, which only weighs 58 grams for only $60. Finally, our most expensive option, guys, is the Logitech G Pro Wireless at $150. This mouse is just amazing, with one of the best sensors in the entire world, lossless wireless technology, and a pretty low weight of only 80 grams. If you're super dedicated and you want the absolute best, guys, this is your number one option. Finally, let's take a look at a few keyboards. All right, so first, We've got the Logitech G213. This keyboard is great with nice looking, customizable RGB lights, you know, a nice shape, function keys with custom commands and more. However, the one downfall is the lack of mechanical switches. This keyboard retails for between $50 and $70, which isn't too bad. If you're on a tighter budget, the G213 is a great option. Second, we've got the Ducky 1-2 Mini, used by tons of pros, which retails around $100. This keyboard uses Cherry MX switches, is super small, and only has 60% of the keys to save space, along with customizable RGB, which you can't go wrong with, all right? The 1-2 Mini is amazing. Finally, our last keyboard, clocking in at $180, is the SteelSeries Apex Pro 10 Keyless Keyboard. This keyboard is absolutely insane for gaming, especially for a game like Fortnite where your speed is everything. This keyboard has the fastest response time out of any keyboard in the entire world, man. Alongside this, you can adjust the sensitivity for every single key, which is like absolutely crazy. 
That means if you want certain keys to press basically on impact, you can do that. If you want some keys to require more force, you can do that as well. This keyboard is absolutely insane and worth every single cent. So ladies and gentlemen, let's do a quick recap. First off, your sensitivity depends heavily on preference, and we recommend messing around with it, you know, just for a little bit, until you feel like you've got a good one, all right? And then stick with it. Second, your key binds are hugely important, and it's absolutely crucial to keep in mind your finger spreading, distance from WASD, and utilization of your mouse buttons. Third, focus on keeping your visual settings all on low performance, apart from your view distance. Finally, picking out the best peripherals will play a huge role in your gameplay. And it's so important, guys, to find peripherals you enjoy using and are comfortable with so that you can just play as well as possible. All right, guys, once again.